class, what all we discussed was, we had discussed about diffusion, facilitated diffusion, then we had discussed about water potential, uh, then we had also discussed about various other aspects, uh, like imbibition also we discussed in the previous class, if you remember about it, osmosis, okay. uh, where there is a osmosis function, when there is a concentration gradient and pressure gradient. I had also discussed about two experiments where they had a physical setup that is Thistle Funnel experiment and we had also had an experiment where uh, we had discussed about potato osmoscope or physiological experiment which includes living cells. So you can demonstrate osmosis through living cells by this potato osmoscope. Probably in your lab they would be demonstrating that potato osmoscope one of the physiological experiments. So here today we are going to discuss about transport implants. All the basic concepts terminology is now you know about. Long transport implants. What do you mean by long transport implants? See the vascular bundles they make a very important function. Vascular tissues are conducting tissues. Xylem absorbs water, minerals. Okay. Whereas uh, the phloem is going to carry the food synthesized from the leaves to different parts of the plant. There are trees like Sequoia Dendron Gigantia, which is 110 meter tall. 110 meter tall. So if you just measure yourself, probably 1 meter, 1.2, 1.3 meters will be 110 meter tall trees. You cannot even hack that tree. You can't have a pico or chico movement. Because to embrace that tree, you require 11 to 12 people to uh, have around the diameter of that tree. That tree, if it falls down, they don't try to remove it, they make a tunnel through it. Okay. Great wood tree or secular dendron, J giant. Such huge trees, how does the water reach to the tip of the stem? How does it reach? So the small uh, forces like diffusion, they might not be helpful. So long distance, that is, the, that is the reason we are talking about. Short distance, it can be the supply of water in case of herbs and uh, smaller plants. It can happen through diffusion, it can happen through osmosis, it can happen through imbibition. But for very tall plants, that might not happen. So how is the transport system in long distance transport in plants? How is that happening? That we'll be discussing about. Then there is a balsam plant experiment, Karna Kundala. You might have done this in, the, uh, in your lab. Okay? So where you would have placed the plant in a beaker and uh, that would be having a colored solution. So a trick of balsam plant, freshly cut balsam plant. We have seen this kaila kundala. The flowers have almost, it looks like ear leaves of kaila. Balsam plant widely chooses, it is translucent, neither completely transparent nor completely opaque. So we choose that plant. If you press that part of this plant, it opens up as a snake hood and releases the seeds. Have you seen that? In the parks, they might be having this plant. So that is that plant of it is placed in eosin solution, which is red stain or saffronic solution. Okay. After half an hour or one hour, you find streaks of red light. You take a thin section of this plant and observe it under microscope, you find that only xylem elements will be stained. What does it indicate? Water is carried through the xylem elements. So whenever you are discussing about uh, ascent of sap, two things are there. Pathway of ascent of sap or pathway of translocation of water, mechanism of translocation of water, what physical forces are acting. You should understand about that. So this is the pathway of translocation of water or you also call it as ascent of sap. So it is through xylem. So this balsam plant experiment probably you have a uh, demonstration to be done in your labs. Okay, it's so a physiological experiment, balsam plant experiment for demonstrating that uh, the ascent of sap or translocation of water takes place through xylem, okay, through the conducting tissue xylem. So now here, some in the uh, okay shops, flower okay shops, you might have seen, twigs of flower, they would have put into colored solution. So the white flowers would be colored or they will be having venation pattern of colored structures. Okay, so it is artificially colored, naturally it is not colored. So you might have seen that twig would be orchid plants, some of them, you might have noticed that they would have placed it in a small vial of colored solution. Have you noticed that? 
in vocation of next time we are going with the see that artificially they color the class. It is similar to that. The quick bearing white class, they are uh, white colored class when they are placed in a colored solution, they become colored. Okay. So the part of water movement is through xylem. When you take a section of that quick and observe it under the microscope, you find that only the xylem would be stained, which indicates that this colored solution has passed through xylem. So there is an experiment itself, Watson plant experiment to demonstrate the pathway of ascent of sand or translocation of water. So mechanism we discuss later. There are many theories, but the most accepted theory will be discussing at the end of the session. I'll give you an introduction to it. Okay. So long distance transport of substances, it can be water, it can be minerals, it can be sucrose that is produced or uh, we also call it as organic substrates. They cannot be uh, transported by diffusion. What is diffusion? Movement of solvents, solutes or gaseous molecules from a region of higher concentration to lower concentration. Why it cannot happen? We have given an example. A 50 micron meter cell, micron array 10 to the power of minus 6 meter. Ashtu Chikkaravatta on cell array, movement of substances, it takes place within that cell of 50 micron, it takes 2.5 seconds. Imagine 110 feet tall. If the plants are depending upon diffusion for getting water, the other parts, the tip of the plant would have dried up by the time the water climbs. It would take years together by diffusion method for the water to climb the top of a tall tree like a red, red wood tree. You should remember about that. So active transport can also not suffice means active transport by expenditure of energy can also not take the water up to the tip of the plant. It is not possible. Long distance is not possible through active transport also. Neither by diffusion nor by active transport. Okay, special long distance transport systems are there which I will be discussing and they are all carrying N mass or mass. It's a German word, N mass. Mass flow hypothesis of the one later we discuss about that. So N mass they are carrying. What are all carrying N mass? Water, minerals and food or organic substrates of the Food in plants, what they have synthesized is, it's in the form of uh, glucose and it would be uh, stored as what? Starch. The reserved material in plants is in starch form. So mass flow, N mass or bulk movement of uh, substances from one point to another because of pressure difference it takes place. So bulk flow achieved by positive, it can be the N mass flow or bulk flow can be achieved by positive hydrostatic pressure gradient. Garden hose, you put it into a water tap, water flows on its own, moves from one region to another region, higher region to lower region, in a garden hose. Or sometimes you might have put a pressure there in the garden hose and you find that the water will travel for higher distances, isn't it? Normal water flow will be for short distance. If you hold your thumbs there, you can uh, see to it that the water reaches longer distance. So you are creating a pressure there, isn't it? So remember about that, they are all positive hydrostatic pressure gradient. Negative hydrostatic pressure gradient is you put a straw in the soft drinks or uh, tender coconut. Will the uh, water climb on its own and reach your lips? You suck, isn't it? When you are sucking in the straw, the air is removed, vacuum is created. There is a negative pressure created. Because of this negative hydrostatic pressure, the water climbs up against the atmospheric pressure. Some amount of that soft drinks would have climbed in the capillary tube, that is the straw. But that is not enough to reach your mouth, so you have to suck there. So that suction pressure, suction force is nothing but negative hydrostatic pressure gradient because of which water climbs. And you should also remember the water, they are held together because of adhesive force and cohesive force. Okay, adhesive forces between light molecules and force of attraction between unlike molecules. Force of attraction between light molecules is water and water. Force of attraction between unlike molecules like water and the glass layer on which it is there. There is a force of attraction. So this adhesive and coercive force is responsible for the water to be continuous, not breaking up in between. Again I discuss about that adhesive and coercive forces. Just remember about that. So the bulk movement of substances, what is translocation? The definition of it is bulk movement of substances. It can be food, minerals, water, 
So through the connecting or vascular tissues of plants, we call it as translocation. Translocation of water, translocation of minerals, translocation of organic solutes, uh, hormones, all these terms we use the translocation. Xylem, what does it translocate? Water, minerals, because minerals are dissolved in water, then organic nitrogen and hormones are carried by the xylem elements. Even plants have hormones, we will be discussing about that in the later topics. We will discuss very interesting topic about, topic about it growth promoters and growth inhibitors. Okay, phytohormones or plant hormones, we'll discuss about that later on. So what does xylem translocate? Apart from water, they also have mineral salts, they have hormones, they have the organic nitrogen also will be carried by this xylem. The sap, sap only, these are the components of it. From where to where? From roots to the aerial parts of the plant. Okay? It is flow is again the gravitational force. See, from soil, the water available for absorption of uh, by the plant, we call it as pressa. There are different types of water. Runway water, capillary water. Pressa okay. is the water available for the roots to absorb from the soil. That water we call it as pressa. Okay. Now, the epidermis has unicellular root heads. We have drawn that in the root and epidermis has we shouldn't even call it as epidermis, it should be epiblema. Has unicellular root hairs. Water is not absorbed by roots, it is absorbed by root hairs. We should remember about that. Root hairs absorb water. So once they absorb, root hairs absorb water, where do they enter? We call this transportation from soil to the xylem of root, we call it as radial transport through the radial. Against the gravitational force, we call it as translocation of water or ascent of sand. So the water movement from soil to the xylem of road, we call it as radial transport. Okay, That transport we are discussing about. See, water enters through the root hairs into the epiblema or epidermis. From the epidermis, they enter into the cortex. From cortex, they enter into the endodermis. Endodermis, you know, they are made up of Casparian layer, Casparian strips. What are these Casparian strips? Deposition of superin. Superinization process. Superin is hydrophobic. You should remember about that. They don't allow water to enter through the superin. You know that water can enter through endodermal cell which doesn't have Casparian thickening. What do you call it as? Passage cell. Passage cell where they do not have this superin deposition or Casparian thickening. Through that they enter the endodermis. The next layer is pericycle. After entering through the pericycle, the Protoxylum will be there to which they enter. Xylem elements. This is how the water is brought from soil into the xylem. The radial transport. Or you can call it as horizontal transport. Vertical transport is translocation. Again, the gravitational force. Okay, this is how the uh, water is obtained from the soil. All the soil water is not taken. The water that is taken, the plants which can absorb the water, we call it as pressar. Okay. So that water is uh, reaching the xylem. Okay. The entry of water into the xylem it can take place through two pathways. Apoplash or non-living pathway, synplash or through the living cells pathway. Okay. Apoplash pathway they are going to take place through the intercellular spaces of the cell. They take place through the intercellular spaces of the cell and walls of the cell, cell wall. Cell wall allows all the water to enter. They are permeable to it. But cell membrane is selectively permeable. Okay? So you should remember this. Complete entry of water do not take place through the cell membrane. Cell wall membrane, it allows all the water to enter inside. Okay? So apoplash pathway it takes place through the cell walls and intercellular spaces of the cell. So it is through non-living components, apoplash pathway. Synplash pathway it is through the cell membrane and it is going to pass through this protoplasm. The protoplasm of two cells are connected, interconnected. What do you call it as? That protoplasmic connection as plasmodes metal connections. The protoplasmic connection between two cells, interconnecting two cells, what do you call that protoplasmic connections as? Plasmodes metal connections. So they enter through the plasmodes metal connections and cell membrane, water enters. So what do you call that pathway as? 
the spot as silt. So that is how water enters up to the xylem. From xylem, it has to reach to the tip of the plant. How is it going to happen? What are the forces? There are various theories which they might not have described here. There was a pulsatory theory uh, put forth by J.C. Bose, Sir Jagdish Chandra Bose, long back. He said that just like our heart, there is contraction and relaxation of the cortical cells in the plant, which is responsible for the ascent of sap. And he devised an instrument to show this pulses in the plant. They call it as prescograph. Prescograph Mulka, the pulses within the cortex he was able to show. But that force is not enough for the ascent of sap or translocation of water to take place. I'm telling you because he's one of our popular scientists, Sir Jagdish Chandra Bose, who said that plants are living things. For the first time he says that. So, uh, how, how did they disprove his theory? Prescograph experiment was. So, they showed that whenever the cells are killed, cortic cortical cells are all living cells. Even if the cells are killed, there is an ascent or transportation of water takes place. So, when they demonstrated that, the, Cresco, the pulsatory theory was not accepted. So, the device that we uh, invented was Prescograph. You should remember about that. So, there is two theories for uh, describing the translocation of water or ascent of sand. They also call it as one as the uh, physical theories, another is the active theories, physical or passive theories where there is no expenditure of energy, active theories where there is expenditure of energy. By physical forces, water are going to take place. What are those physical forces theory, Andre? There are theories like uh, the uh, osmotic pressure in the water, climate, imbibational theory, capillary force theory. All these are the theories that they speak about where it is because of uh, the without physical forces that the ascent of sap takes place. They are all not accepted, but historically, many of the plant physiologists had put forth these theories to explain the ascent of sap. Okay. Then there are uh, the relay pump theory, according to which the uh, xylem parenchyma pumps the water into the uh, xylem. So if that is the case, it could be zigzag movement of water. Okay. So the relay pump theory, which is also not accepted. The most accepted theory at present, which has also been proved by experiments, is uh, Jolie and Dixon's theory called as transpirational pool theory, cohesive adhesive theory. Transpirational pool theory or cohesive adhesive force theory. So that we'll discuss in the later class. Okay. So these are things that you have to remember regarding the uh, long distance transport of plants. So we'll be discussing about transport of water and we'll also be discussing about transport of organic solutes in the upcoming classes.